the increasing complexity of the modern vehicle is due in large part to the proliferation of onboard computers and other electronics. The various computers in today's vehicles use inputs from multiple sensors to make decisions that ensure the vehicle is operating as designed, and they send their own signals to various actuators, modules, and solenoids. These computers play an important role in the safe, reliable operation of the vehicle and its major systems. The computer we talk about most often is the Powertrain Control Module, or PCM. The PCM is the electronic brain that controls almost everything the engine does. It controls ignition timing, fuel delivery, valve timing in engines with variable valve timing, emissions functions, turbo boost pressure in turbocharged engines, idle speed, throttle position, and cruise control. In vehicles that don't use a separate transmission control module, the PCM also controls the automatic transmission. It's also involved in a lot of other things that reach far beyond the engine itself, like the body control module, anti-lock braking system and traction control, electronic steering, climate control, lighting modules, and keyless entry. It communicates with these and other subsystems to share information, data, and interactive functions. So let's talk about what can go wrong with a PCM. PCMs typically fail for one of two reasons. Voltage overloads, often due to a short in a solenoid or actuator circuit, or environmental factors such as corrosion, thermal stress, or vibration. If the shorted solenoid or actuator isn't found and repaired, the replacement PCM could fail as well, leading to a customer comeback. As for environmental factors, water can cause serious problems. When water infiltrates a PCM, it can short circuits and lead to irreversible corrosion that ruins electronic connections. Ever wonder why most insurance companies consider flood damaged vehicles a total loss? It's because the electronics will never be the same again. Even if they still work, corrosion will likely cause all kinds of problems down the road. We also should mention that a PCM that fails prematurely could be the victim of unintended installation error as well. The well-meaning technician or DIYer could have accidentally crossed wires, zapped the electronics with a jolt of static electricity, disconnected or reconnected wires while the key was on, or failed to follow the proper reset, relearn, or reinitialization procedures that may be required to get everything working again. Generally, the PCM is pretty reliable, and it's an expensive piece of hardware to replace, so if your customer suspects that they need a new PCM, they should make sure that there's strong evidence that the problem is within the PCM itself and not somewhere else. As we mentioned in a previous video, many drivability and emissions problems can be addressed simply by reflashing the PCM with updated software from the vehicle manufacturer. When a customer does need a replacement PCM, identifying and selecting the correct unit is critical. As Tom Dayton points out in a recent Counterman article, the original part number and application, as well as any calibration codes and vehicle options, should be determined before ordering the replacement. Depending on the application, additional on-vehicle flashing may be required for the vehicle to become mobile again. This may include VIN and mileage programming, calibration updates, and even a relearn period. Most aftermarket PCMs are offered as remanufactured units, so a rebuildable core of the same or equivalent part number is often required. Regardless of whether it's a new or reman PCM, accurate diagnosis of the failure is critical so that the replacement PCM actually solves the problem. Thanks for watching.